having absolute value inequalities. So we have solved absolute value inequalities, but now we're going to graph them. And the good news is our calculator will help us with this. Okay. Um, so I'm really I'm going to focus on using the calculator. There are some steps there if you want to do it by hand that you can follow. We create a table of values just like we did before. Um, we graph it. Now here is where there is a difference. Okay. If it is just less than or just greater than, like we see here in one and three, then you don't graph a solid line. Okay, you're going to use a dashed line because it's not equal to. Okay, it's just greater than or less than. So you use a dashed line. If it is greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, then we will graph it with a solid line. And then we're going to do some shading because it's an inequality. Um, if it's less than, we shade below. If it's greater than, we shade above. But the neat thing is our calculator will even tell us that part too. So grab your calculator. Let's put the absolute value of x plus 1. Okay, absolute value of x plus 1. Put that in your y equals. Now, before we hit graph, to close it up, before we hit graph, have you ever noticed over here on the very left, these slash lines? Have you ever wondered what, what the heck are those there for? Okay, here's what they're there for. If you move your cursor all the way over there, and you press enter, okay, it changes. It becomes a thicker line. Press enter again. Now it's a triangle, okay? Now it's a triangle. Um, when it's up there on the top, that's representing greater than. Press enter again. Now it's a triangle on the bottom. That's representing less than, okay? And that's what we want. We want our function is less than the absolute value of x plus 1. Now we can press graph. And look at that. It did all the shading for us. We can go to our table to get our specific points that we need to graph. Um, let's get some symmetry going here. Remember, we want to center it up so that our y values are symmetric if possible. So let's plot them, negative 4, positive 3, negative 3, positive 2, negative 2, positive 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3. It is just less than. So this should not be a solid line. It should be a dashed line. So however you want to do that. I think it helps, like if you skip a square. Okay, so there's our function. It is less than or equal to that, so we shade below, like the calculator was showing us when we pressed graph. Now, don't spend a whole lot of time coloring in your graph, okay? That's sufficient right there. I know it's not very pretty, but it is sufficient, okay? So... Accurately graph the absolute value function like we've been doing. If it's not equal to, then your line should be dashed. Then you shade above. If it's greater than, you shade below. If it's less than. Now, what does this mean? Okay, what does this mean? What this means is if I pick a point in this shaded region, let me pick an easy one. Let me say... 0, negative 4. Okay, if I pick the point 0, negative 4, and I plug that into this inequality right here, it will be true. Okay, I plugged in 0 for x and negative 4 for y. 0 plus 1 is 1. The absolute value of 1 is 1. Negative 4 is less than 1. I could have picked any point in this green shaded area right here, and when I plug in the x and the y, that inequality would be true. The number on the left would be less than the number on the right. That's what this means. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do number two. The key with number two is that you got to remember to close your parentheses. Okay, these aren't hard. 
you just got to know how to use your calculator and remember to close your parentheses. So math, num, abs, x minus 5, close your parentheses. Where that absolute value bar closes, your parentheses close. Minus 2. This one is greater than, so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to hit enter until I have that triangle on top. If you miss it, just keep pressing enter. It'll scroll through them um, all the way back to the beginning. Okay, press graph. That's what my graph should look like. Let's go to the table. Mm, let's find some symmetry here. There we go. Okay, there's some symmetry. Two, one, whoops, where'd my graph go? There's my table. Two, one, three, zero, four, negative one, five, negative two. Guess what? That's my vertex. Six, negative one, seven, zero, eight, one. This one is equal to, so it is a solid line. Whoops. I'm not doing a very good job of drawing a straight line here today. There we go. It's greater than, so we shade above, which is also what our graph was showing us here. So this is our solution right here. Okay, this is our solution. Anything on the line or in that region is a solution to the equation. Okay, easy, right? We just gotta know how to use our calculator. Let's look at number three. Absolute value of four X plus six. It is greater than, it's not equal to. So that's what my graph should look like. Let's go to the table. Woo, I need to move this way. All right. So my vertex is not on a whole number. I know that because I can't get my table exactly centered. Okay, here, I mean, I see the symmetry, but usually I have the same value up here at the top that I do at the bottom. So let's still, let's plot what we're looking at. I can't plot 14. I can do negative 3, 6. Negative 3, positive 6. I can do negative 2, positive 2. I can do negative 1, positive 2. So what does that mean? That means my vertex... It's somewhere in between those. My vertex is somewhere in between those. And it is on the x-axis because I'm not adding anything to the end of this absolute value function. So our vertex is somewhere in here. Let's see here. 0, 6. Okay, it's not equal to, so I need a dashed line. It's greater than, so I shade above my function, so it's inside of it right here. And that looks like a hot mess. But hopefully you get the idea. Okay, be careful with your shading that it doesn't get all mixed up with your line. Kind of like mine did right there. Okay. Let's do one more together, and then I'm going to let y'all do some. Negative absolute value, 2x, close the parentheses, plus 3. This one is less than. Look at the graph. Okay, so I know what I should look like. Let's go to the table. There we go. Negative 3, negative 3. Negative 2, negative 1. Negative 1, 1. 0, 
keep plotting here. Okay, this one is equal to, so I get to use a solid line. It is less than, so we're shading below. And I'm going to check it with the calculator here. Okay, so we are inside our function down here on the bottom. Okay, questions?